All right, my friends, so my mom is in a assisted living facility now, a Virginia Mennonite retirement community up in the Harrisonburg, Virginia. Um, it's not a C, I don't think it's a CCRC. CCRC is a, it might well, DMRC might be a continuing care retirement community where they start you off uh, in independent living, then they moved you to like in the apartments, and then they moved you to assisted living, and then if you need, they moved you to skilled care. Um, right now, she's in the assisted living that she needs you know, she needs someone to take care of her, essentially. So she, we didn't, we bypassed the independent living, bypassed the apartment living, and went straight to the assisted living facility. Um, and that's cost about 12000 bucks a month, right, 12000 a month. So, you know, I mean, that's, that ain't cheap. I, I don't deny that. I don't deny that. But what happens is these places, and we're, we're probably going to move her up to New Jersey at some point because that's where my sister lives. And, uh, you know, we, Abby's looked at a couple of places up there about the same cost. That's 24-7 care, and they feed you, they bathe you, the whole thing. Um, they had just a nice staff, young ladies, we had one guy, one guy and three young, very petite ladies, young ladies too, that were helping her out. And, um, just, you know, nice people, man, across the board. They got registered nurses there. Um, I'm sure they have like a nurse practitioner in charge of the RNs. And then I'm, I'm you know, obviously they got doctor staff and whatnot too. But, uh, you know, there's a pool there, there's churches there. There's, it's just, it's, it's an all encompassing community. Now, how does she afford this? Well, she's probably got about four thousand dollars a month of income from her uh, her deceased husband's social security, and then we did some annuities or the inheritance that she got when my grandparents died. We did some income annuities, so she got four thousand a month. All right, so that means she needs about eight thousand a month to pay for all this. All right, eight thousand times twelve. Even this little freaking petite brain of mine, lump of coal, as Norm Coleman would say, is that's ninety six thousand a year. All right. So ninety six thousand a year, we'll just say for three years. All right, well, who knows, man? My mom is, you know, all that cigarette smoking probably going to make her life expectancy go to one hundred and twenty. Um, but uh, <laughs> she's never going to die. <laughs> for someone who doesn't walk, uh, she's tough as nails. That's her day of sure. It's crazy. But anyway, you know, I love my mom, and she's still cognizant, absolutely. Um, but uh, you know, that's three that's three years at most for the assisted living facility. What happens though is is that if she's got more than you know, that, what I'm saying is we sell sell our house. I don't know if I said that. So we sell our house for about three hundred thousand bucks. You know, all said and done, yeah, I think that's probably the low end. But who knows, man? I don't know. Let's just say you know we're gonna have to you know take out the carpets because the carpets are just disgusting. You know, do a fresh coat of paint, probably a new roof and all that stuff. Um, you'll probably put fifty thousand bucks into it, and then uh, um, I, you know, maybe not a new roof. Who knows? I don't know. But you know, let's just say with everything you know the commissions and all that, so she'll walk away with three hundred thousand bucks. Now, she doesn't have a whole lot of money in a portfolio. I mean, she doesn't have even half a million bucks, let me just tell you. So, you know, we got probably three years to four years most of living there. So what happens is, you know, these guys aren't stupid. These facilities, they know, you know, the, they look at the, your life expectancy, you know, actuarial tables, essentially, actuarial tables, essentially mortality tables. They say, look, the average person survives 18 months. The average person survives two years, all right? If you are, you know, remember, the average person... There's people who survive beyond that. So what happens if you run out of money and you survive beyond the, the three to four years of average life expectancy, whatever it is? And it's not three to four years. I can almost guarantee it's going to be 18, to two, 18 months to two years. So what happens after that? Well, then you go to a Medicaid, all right, and they just put you on Medicaid. It's, instead of having your own room, it's a shared room for people who run out of money. I mean, yeah, it's not the best scenario, but... The likelihood of that happening is minimal. Right? I mean, still, some people do, 100%. But they don't put you out on the street. I, I don't, this, I mean, this, <laughs> America doesn't put people out on the street from nursing homes. That doesn't happen. So what they do is Medicaid. This is why I'm so adamant that you should pay your own way until you run out of money so that way Medicaid can pay for the people who are truly indigent. You know, I don't like this Medicaid, you know, planning and whatnot because it's like, dude, we have poor people who need the, the resources. And if you are passing your money to your kids as opposed to paying for your own way, that, that's the taxpayers paying for that. I just, I don't like it, man. I think it's bad, and I don't think we should be doing that. So my mom's going to pay her own way until she runs out of money. That's just that simple. Once she runs out of money, she'll lose her, uh, her own individual room because this is a one-person room. My mom's got her own room, and then she'll roomy with another person, just like when I was in the Army in the barracks. Again, that's not the ideal, but it's certainly not putting put down the snow with, in poopy pants. You know what I'm saying? It's just so you sell your house for three hundred thousand bucks, walk away. That's three years of care, and that's everything. There's no more property tax to pay. There's no more electricity bill. There's nothing like that, man. I mean, so you know, let's just say it costs you four. I mean, it's more expensive. You're paying for twenty four seven care. I mean, that's not free. But I just I think the average person in the United States who has a house that's paid off. 
can easily afford three years at a nursing home. Like that, I mean, that's a single per room. That's not, it's, it's not a barracks. It's not, it's not living with somebody until you run out of money. And that's just what we're dealing with now. And that's a pretty high-end one. VMRC ain't cheap. And the place my sister's looking up in New Jersey, they're not cheap. But I mean, my mom's in a millionaire. She's got about 4000 bucks a month from her Social Security and annuities. She's going to sell her house for about 300000 bucks. She's got to live in a portfolio, and you know, that's three to four years. Right? If she survives that, and then you know, if she runs out of money, that's not assuming any growth or anything like that. If she runs out of money, then they're going to put her in Medicaid facility, which she'll share room with somebody. That's it. That's what we're looking at, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't know. It, just, it seems to me this isn't the biggest concern. I, 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 I don't get it, man. I mean, I, I just don't get, like, it just seems to me this isn't nearly as bad as what people make it seem to be. Um, yeah, you don't want your mom living with a roomie. We'll have to cross that bridge at that point. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, I mean, you, you're not living on a street. I, I, you're just not. And by the way, I mean, by then she'll be 83 years old. I mean, will her mind still be there? I mean, who knows? That's even if she survives that long anyway. And, um, I don't know. And, you know, then, of course, she has kids to fall back on. And that's something we'd have to think about at some point. But this isn't, like... If for me, it's not frightening enough where I should keep working in a crappy old job that stressed me out. I'm getting fat. My blood pressure is going through the roof. My, you know, my, my stress is just, that's the risk of that happening, what my mom's going through compared to you and a 58-year-old guy who's 40 pounds overweight and your stress level is high and your relationship's cracking. I just, man, the risk that you have is right now. It's not the risk what my mom's going through. It's just not. I just, I wish people more would realize the risk that you have is a hell of a lot more urgent than worrying about what happens when you're 80, what, what 78 years old. All right. Love your thoughts. God bless.